time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles. Now, I promised you guys a tour of the biggest Bitcoin mine in North America, and I went and shot the whole video, and I tried to get it all together for you guys, but then I ran into some legal snags, there was some miscommunication issues, and the majority of my video, unfortunately, contained NDA and protected uh, intellectual property and stuff like that. So, I wasn't able to release that video. Now, that doesn't mean the video is not gonna come out. It may come out in a few months. We just have to wait for some patents to clear and for the investors in this Bitcoin mine to be cool with it being released but in the meantime I know a lot of you guys wanted a Bitcoin video so I figured I would do a quick vlog style video showing you guys my Bitcoin mine now it's not the biggest one in North America but I like to think it's pretty decent for just a single guy like chilling at his home so let's go check it out Alright guys, well now we're in my garage. This is where my Bitcoin mining actually started because the miners themselves make a lot of noise and generate a lot of heat. So I moved my first operation out here when uh, my buddy Marshall from Final Hash, he's at Final Hash on Twitter if you guys want to go talk to him about anything Bitcoin related, the dude gets like mega excited about it. But he basically provided me with some Bitcoin miners to review and you guys saw those in the past video and that was the Spawn Dooley's SP20, which you can see right here is still sitting in my garage. This is a little, uh, I believe about 1.7 tera hash a second little beastie, beastly monster. And up in the nerd cave, I ran one of the Ant Miner S3 Pluses. So between the two machines, I got a little bit over two tera hash a second, all said and done, which was pretty decent uh, for like a little home operation. But the problem was, my wife drives one of those Chevy Volts. And there's the power plug for the Chevy Volt. But the problem is the Chevy Volt consumes 12 amps off of a 15 amp circuit. So in a nutshell, what that meant for me is every time she plugged the car in to charge it, it was like rolling the dice. Every like third time it would blow the breaker, stopping my miner and shutting me down. So I didn't even have enough power in the garage to run it. So I decided after Marshall gave me a bunch of Ant Miner S5s, that they're the newest, most efficient miners. I think they do about six, 700 watts of power per 1.1 terahash of mining power. He gave those to me. There was no way I could run any more stuff here in the garage. So I decided to move the operation outside. All right, guys, well, we're outside now, but unfortunately in Washington, it's always dumping down rain. So I borrowed my uh, son's Thomas the Train umbrella. So this should keep us nice and dry. Guys, all right, there's my house. There's my Bitcoin mine. Now, I'm gonna show you guys something here before we go crack and open the Bitcoin mine. You can probably hear the hum in there. It's actually quite loud. God, this is really nasty out here. But you can see my, uh, my power source. Here, we'll follow it right here. All right, there we go. Dun, 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 You can see going up and up and up. It's going in the Nerd Cave window. Now, the reason for that being is I had an electrician actually run two dedicated 20 amp circuits into the Nerd Cave. And you guys might be able to see there's like a little conduit running up along the side. And you can see the junction box. And those, uh, those 20 amp circuits are dedicated to the Nerd Cave to run air conditioning, all the computer stuff. Well, it was way overkill. I only ended up using one of the 20 amp circuits. So I had one free. So I decided to run an extension cord down here to the Bitcoin mine. And you guys can see this is pretty jerry-rigged right here. We just got the cable going in there and I stuffed some foam in the hole, nothing special. And I also installed an exhaust outlet. Now, the problem is that exhaust outlet is water can get in there. So right now I'm designing and printing a 3D shroud to cover that. And I might even put some netting over it too so some birds don't like go through there and fillet themselves into french fries. All right, well, let's go crack her open and take a look inside. All right, this camera is usually pretty good with the light. So let's see how it works. All right, so here we are in my little Bitcoin mine. It's a toasty, probably 85 degrees, 82, 85 degrees in here. You can see I have four Ant Miner S5s all running. Two of them are using PC power supplies. These two right here. And then the other two are using HP server power supplies that were modified. And then of course you can see I just have a regular 120 millimeter uh, CPU cooling fan uh, pushing air out. Now it's not really sufficient. I'm gonna get a way higher volume fan. So as you guys can probably tell from the audio, it is pretty loud in here. Even with just four of these machines running, it would be hard to sit in here and have a conversation without talking really loudly. Now you can imagine that the Bitcoin mine that I visited uh, in Washington State a couple of days ago and got that video I couldn't post, 
they had like 250 plus of these in a shipping container. Yeah, you can imagine how noisy that was. Now, all of the miners are connected to the house through this guy. This is just a little Netgear access point. I have it in bridge mode so that each one of these can get an IP address from my networking closet. And it actually works really, really well. I've been running for about four or five days now without a single problem or a single shutdown, and everything's going smoothly. You guys probably just heard the fans kick down. That's because I basically opened up the door on my little Bitcoin mine here and it lets some fresh air in so the fans don't have to work as hard to dissipate the heat. I really do need to find a way to get the temperature down in here a little bit more. Now, like I was saying, each one of those Bitcoin miners generates about 1.1 terahash or 1100 gigahash a second of hash rate. And that's basically how many computations it can make to attempt to find Bitcoins on the internet. Well, I do pool mining. Uh, right now I'm in the Bitcoin affiliate network pool, but I do move around a little bit. And uh, I also lease these rigs out on betarigs.com. So if you want to rent my hardware and run on it for three hours or more, you can do that through betarigs.com. It's actually kind of a cool site if you don't want to invest in your own equipment, but you are interested in getting into Bitcoin mining. Now guys, the things to keep in mind when you're Bitcoin mining is if you have to purchase the equipment, you have to factor that cost into how long it's gonna take for you to recoup your investment. And it can be a long time depending on how you got the equipment. Now I was lucky enough to get my equipment for free uh, through my buddy Marshall. So I don't have an equipment cost, so I'm immediately making money. But just to let you know, right now at current market value, I just went and ran the equation, I'm making about $8.30 a day profit after paying for power. So, and that's off, off of about 4.4 gigahash of, uh, of mining power. So realistically, you're not gonna get rich, you're not gonna pay a lot of bills, but you know, you can make a couple hundred dollars a month, or if you get the equipment real cheap, you can recoup those costs quickly, and then start making a couple hundred a month. But the thing is, guys, is you have to have cheap power. My power is 10 cents per kilowatt. If your power is any more than 10 cents per kilowatt, I would not recommend getting your own equipment and running it. Well guys, that's my mine, and it consumes about 2,300 watts of power. That's how I'm able to compute the power cost, and I did that by connecting it through a kilowatt, which tells you how many watts you're drawing through that extension cord. And I don't have a lot more power to use, and I did have some more equipment. So of course, the logical solution was to talk my neighbors into sticking it in their garage. Also guys, you can never have too much security. I personally like 82. They've been really good and the police response time here is like 40 seconds. It's awesome. All right So since I ran out of power, I talked my neighbor into putting the Bitcoin miner in his garage so Let's go ahead and take a look at that All right, so this garage has more power than me because this guy does not drive hybrid or electric cars He was wise. I didn't I didn't think about the Bitcoin implications for buying a Chevy Volt So this guy right here. This is the ant miner s4 that I'm running look even has a rack a lot of you guys were asking about this rack when I was posting Instagram photos this is actually an audio equipment rack. This is not a server rack. This is just repurposed by a clever engineer. Maybe I'll put a link down in the video description if I can find it. But guys, this is the Antminer S4. It's capable of about two, 2.1 terahash a second. You can see it's a beastly box too that runs in here. So this one, this one box can do roughly uh, the work of two of the Antminer S5s. All I gotta do now is convince every other one of my neighbors in the neighborhood to stick one of these in their garage, and then I'm good to go. Well guys, you can tell it's now nighttime. I was a little worried because it's raining hard outside that water was gonna get in through that fan back there behind me. So I decided to 3D print a shroud um, or like a hood to go over it so that the rain would just come off and it wouldn't be like pouring in through the wall. And uh, so here's my Tinkercad drawing that you guys can see that I uh, put together. It's my very first like 3D model in a long time. It's my first Tinkercad model. And surprisingly, I printed the thing out and it fits perfectly. So you guys might not be able to see it through the fan on the inside, but I'll show you on the outside. But there's now a hood sticking through the wall. It's pancaked between the fan and the wall. I know I'm a little bit, it's a little bit hard to do these night shots, but now there's no more rain coming in. Here, I'll show you from the outside. Here you guys can see it on the outside, just sticking through the wall. And uh, the fan is in there and it's running, it's blowing out good air, and it acts like a little hood. Here, I'll show you guys the inside. Hopefully you can see the fan spinning in there. I'm actually using my son's uh, umbrella to run some blockage, but wow, for my, the first thing I've done in Tinkercad and it just, everything just fit perfectly, went through the wall, screwed right into place, everything lined up, I'm amazed. 
Well guys, I got absolutely soaking wet there at the end of the video, but the rain was like pouring down like crazy and you guys saw there at the beginning, I didn't have that fan shroud and water was literally just kind of coming down the wall and droplets and, and getting in there. I think the pressure from the fan probably would have kept most of the water out, but I just didn't want to take a risk. But how cool is that? You just open up Tinkercad, take a couple of shapes, put them together, merge them, subtract some stuff, and boom, I have a fan shroud. I printed out, took like three hours to print the shroud. I took it back out and it literally just fit perfectly through the hole and all the screws lined up and everything. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I can't believe that on my first try, I nailed that. I mean, even though it's a simple design for me, that was a pat on my back. I was like, wow, can't believe I nailed that on the first time. So that was pretty cool. This was just gonna be a tour of the Bitcoin mine, but then it turned into kind of a weather rescue mission there. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know down in the comments or come over and tweet me. I'm at Barnacles on Twitter. Also, if you guys have any Bitcoin related questions, make sure to go over and ask at Final Hash on Twitter. They're basically my Bitcoin experts, my go-to guys. And uh, they never get bored with the stuff. So you can pretty much ask them anything. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really do. I'm going to keep doing the Bitcoin mining thing as long as it's profitable to me. You know, do your research, figure out if it's profitable, profitable for you. And if it's something that you want to do, make sure that for whatever reason that you're doing it, it's the right reason, and don't get in over your head. All right, guys, take it easy. Until next time. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also, come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.